Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, World War 3 is making a comeback, Valve announced a Steam mobile gaming platform, Warzone got a major balance update, Netflix is getting into video games, and much more. Tactical Modern Military FPS World War III may be coming back from the dead. Last year, the game's developers announced a partnership with publisher My.Games. The partnership meant that they had more funding and resources to finish development. At the time, they were previewing some upcoming improvements that looked very promising, like improved animations, scope rendering, and movement. Things were looking potentially better for the game with these updates on the horizon. Then, nearly a year went by without so much as a tweet from the developers. Developers. That all changed yesterday. World War 3's developers released an update video showcasing major changes coming to the game soon. All the game's maps have been updated with reworked areas and lighting. Those animation, movement, and scope rendering improvements have been implemented. The entire UI for both the in-game heads-up display and menus have been overhauled to be more readable and useful. A new backpack system is being added that lets you customize your weapons on the fly during a round. A kill cam is also being added. The only info missing from the video really is a release date for the update. For all we know, it could be days, weeks, or months away. But really, the big question is, does it matter? World War III had the potential to compete with Battlefield and Call of Duty back when both of those franchises were underperforming. These days though, the hype for Battlefield 2042 couldn't be bigger and Warzone is one of the most popular FPS titles around. So there isn't a ton of wiggle room for a game that spent the last year on life support to make an epic comeback. That said, the reception to the development update has been very positive, all of the improvements and changes look like a massive leap forward for World War 3. It could help bring back many players that abandoned the game. The game is currently delisted from sale on Steam. Part of the My.Games partnership was World War 3 going free to play, but there's been no update on when or even if that's still happening. We're curious to hear what you guys think about the update. Is the hype for World War 3 back or is it too little too late? Let us know in the comments. The mid-season update for Warzone is live. It makes more sweeping balance changes to the game, nerfing the average time to kill of most weapons. Not all of Warzone weapons were massively nerfed though. In the Assault Rifle class, the AS Val, FAL, Odin, Cold War AK-47, FFAR, and Ram 7 all lead the pack with 600 millisecond TTK or better. SMGs also have some new standouts. The OTS-9 was added with the update and sports a close range TTK of 494 milliseconds. The AUG, Fennec, and Cold War MP5 all kill under 600 milliseconds as well. Most other weapons across all other classes except sniper rifles have a TTK above that 600 millisecond mark. It's tough to say if the effects of this patch amount to anything or not. Leaving a handful of standout weapons with insanely fast TTKs while nerfing most other guns seems like a two steps forward, one step back adjustment. Aside from the balance changes, Raven have also fixed a ton of bugs, improved the accessibility options for text chat, updated the Gulag loadouts, and added a new objective-based mode called Payload. Two teams of 20 players have to escort a caravan of vehicles through checkpoints across Verdansk. Whoever gets all of their vehicles safely delivered first wins. Warzone updates are always divisive. It'll probably take a few days for a genuine consensus to form about the mid-season update. Valve officially announced their long-rumored handheld console. It's called the Steam Deck and starts shipping in December. The device looks like a beefed-up Nintendo Switch. Inside, it's rocking an AMD Zen 2 quad-core APU with an RDNA 2 integrated GPU. It has three storage options ranging from 64GB to 512GB. You can also expand it with a micro SD card. The Steam Deck runs a modified version of SteamOS, Valve's Linux-based operating system, and it can play the entire library of Proton-compatible Steam games, which is, well, most titles. The Steam Deck supports Steam Remote Play as well, so any game it can run, you can stream from your PC either at home or over the internet. 
And since it's essentially just running Linux, the Steam Deck can also function like a portable computer complete with mouse and keyboard support. You can even hook up an external monitor and play it as if it was a desktop PC. If you want to get extra technical, you can also install straight up Windows to the device. Valve are basically letting you do whatever you want with it. As for controls, you have the standard face buttons and bumpers from other controllers, but Valve also added two trackpads to the Steam Deck's face. They've used trackpads pads on their Steam controller and VR controllers before, and they work fantastic when trying to emulate a mouse for games that don't directly support a mouse or just work better with mouse-like controls. So it should allow you to play RTS games just as well as you could play FPS games. The screen is also touchscreen, so it gives you plenty of input options. Pricing starts at $400 and goes up with the expanded storage options. Netflix are reportedly adding games to their existing content subscriptions within the next year. A report by Bloomberg says the online streaming giant will offer games as their own category and won't charge extra to access them. Netflix recently hired an executive from EA as their vice president of game development. As for what games you can expect on Netflix, well, we don't know. It seems likely that the Witcher series might be included since CG Projekt Red are making DLC for The Witcher 3 inspired by the Netflix series. Hackers who stole the source code for FIFA 21 and the Frostbite game engine from EA are demanding a ransom to keep them offline. The hackers released 1.3 gigabytes of 780 that they stole from EA servers a few weeks ago. EA say none of these stolen files contain private customer information, but speculation suggests that the source code for FIFA and Battlefield being publicly available could have disastrous consequences. Something similar happened with Team Fortress 2. The cheats, hacks, and bots developed since Team Fortress 2 source code leaked brought the game's official servers to their knees. Valve released an update that fixed the game a couple of weeks ago after over a year of mayhem. EA are working with federal law enforcement and it's doubtful that they'll pay the ransom. Even if they did, the hackers would most likely release all of the stolen data anyway, or just ask for more money at a later date. In a spot of good news for anti-cheat efforts, the machine learning auto-aim cheat that we've been covering over the past few days has been officially shut down by its developer following a request by Activision. What made this particular cheat so dangerous is that it doesn't mess with the game directly and can run on a second PC that's totally offline. It takes the video feed of your PC or console and runs an AI shape recognition tool to identify enemies. Once an enemy is identified, the software sends input commands to your controller or mouse and keyboard that functions like an aimbot. And while it's great to see this particular cheat getting shut down, it's clear that other cheats like it will become wildly popular over time. The only barrier to entry for these kinds of cheats are the cost of a dongle and the technical know-how to get a real-time video feed of your game sent to a PC. And with capture cards and OBS these days, that's, well, pretty easy to do. There's a good chance that these cheats may eventually become ubiquitous. The good news is machine learning anti-cheat solutions can detect these types types of cheats already. Developers might not be able to detect the cheat software itself, but they will be able to identify the inputs it sends to games because they aren't human or statistically impossible. Capcom announced a patch is coming for the PC version of Resident Evil Village to address stuttering. It was recently discovered by game pirates that cracking the game to disable its DRM fixed stuttering in certain scenes. Digital Foundry tested the crack in question and they confirmed the performance improvements. That said, it's unclear if it's the DRM that causes the stutters or not. The crack also breaks key animations that play during moments that cause stutters. Village runs fine on consoles even with the animations. There's there's also a mod for the crack that restores the broken animations and it runs fine as well. Capcom haven't provided any information about the patch or given us a release date for it. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. It keeps you in the loop whenever we upload a new video and helps the channel reach more viewers. Red Dead Redemption 2 just got an update that adds NVIDIA DLSS upscaling tech. The performance improvements are pretty dramatic. Depending on your settings and resolution, you could see 20 to 50% more FPS on average with DLSS enabled. On top of the performance benefits, the game also looks great with DLSS compared to without it. All that said, don't expect to get 120 FPS just by enabling DLSS. According to NVIDIA, RTX 20 series GPUs like the 2080 Ti only manage 60 FPS at 4K with 
DLSS set to performance mode, even with the RTX 30 series barely managing to hit 80 FPS. At low resolutions, the performance bump should be much more significant. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.